Um, okay, great. So my presentation, which you just saw, is slope reduction. Oh my gosh, no. Okay. I'm so sorry. I think maybe if you turn the PDF to like not slideshow, but just view full screen. Is that right. what you did? So let's see. Um, so right. if you exit out. And then where it says view at the top. And then enter full screen at the very bottom. Potentially that will help. Okay. Otherwise I'll talk really fast. Okay, so slow production of small polar craters on the moon. Next slide, please, for real. Okay, great. <laughs> um, yep, so there have been a couple of studies suggesting that potentially there's tens of meters of ice rich materials at the uh, lunar poles. So for example, um, Kokonov and more recently by Lior Rubinenko showed that craters become more shallow as you approach the poles, potentially from ice rich fill. Next slide, please. So um, if these thick ice bearing layers are present and they're influencing crater morphometry, is it possible that ice rich layers can also affect surface slope? And the cold trapping framework would suggest that volatiles should preferentially accumulate within colder areas, which for craters are typically pole facing um, walls. Next slide, please. And Lior um, looked at this idea in his paper. So using his data, I've plotted here the pole facing slopes in blue and then equator facing slopes in pink. Um, and as you can see, there isn't any significant difference between the two, which is perhaps a little odd, but maybe it's telling you that the direction of the wall isn't what's having the greatest effect on volatile accumulation. Um, next slide, please. So here we are re-examining this question, whether cold trap volatiles influence the slopes of lunar craters, but we're looking specifically at the PSRs where water ice is known to be thermally stable on uh, geologic time scales. Next, please. So to do this, we've identified craters that are one to five kilometers in diameter. They're located between 80 and 90 degrees. And we were really careful to exclude craters that are located on pre-existing slopes because the slope of the target surface can have a significant um, influence on a crater shape. And we also excluded craters in secondary chains due to irregularities in size and shape, and then craters that are superposed by other craters. So the intention was to start with the nicest version of craters because there's so many different factors that can influence the slopes of the craters. And we wanted to try our best to minimize those. Uh, next slide, please. And for reference, Lior's paper analyzed craters from a larger size range, a slightly larger geographic range, and then also a constrained depth to diameter range. But for our study, we decided to look at small craters in order to minimize some of the size dependent uh, degradation that influences crater shape. Next slide, please. So this selection process gave us 564 craters, and those are the ones that you see circled here in white on top of a Lola slope map. Next slide, please. And at each crater, we extracted slopes from pole facing and equator facing walls, and then we categorized these slopes as either being inside or outside of PSRs. Next slide, please. Okay, so what we found so far, um, the first observation is that pole facing and equator facing slopes are from the same statistical distribution. So this is consistent with what Leo found. Um, we both saw that median slopes are slightly lower for the pole facing group, but this difference isn't statistically significant. Next slide, please. Um, so now we're looking at just the equator facing slopes. So PS are slower in the solid line, and those tend to be steeper than on PSR slopes, which are in the dotted line. And this is what you would expect just based on the crater's geometry, meaning that um, the more topography you have, the, the steeper of the slopes, that gives rise to PSRs um, just by the nature of the shape. And so if something is flatter, you're not going to have as much shadow. So this is, this is what we would expect um, to look at like a typical crater. Um, next slide, please. 
But uh, what's interesting is that when you look at just the pole facing slopes, which is on the right, the pattern reverses. So now you have the PSR slopes, they tend to be shallower than illuminated slopes. Um, this is the opposite of what you would expect geometrically, which is interesting. So I think this is consistent with maybe some sort of infill from volatiles or volatile related uh, slope degradation. Next slide, please. So just within the PSRs, we find that pole facing slopes tend to be shallower. Um, so perhaps you have more volatiles that are being accumulated in the pole facing PSRs than the slightly warmer um, equator facing PSRs. Next slide, please. Okay, and uh, lastly, we're looking at slopes only outside of the PSRs, and we see that equator facing ones tend to be shallower. So in non PSR walls, then there, there shouldn't be as many volatiles. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'd say it's more difficult to accumulate and retain volatiles on long time scales outside of PSRs. So maybe when volatiles are less of a factor, then temperature dominates the slope degradation process. Um, and this is consistent with work by Valentin Bickel showing that lunar rock falls preferentially occur on equator facing slopes. Next slide, please. Okay, so thinking about the results so far, maybe the picture for where volatiles are sequestered looks something like this. Um, and this is gonna depend on how you're defining these zones though, because it's dependent on length scale, it's dependent on um, time scale of temperature and illumination. And I think maybe one of the more interesting volatile related degradation uh, processes could be happening sort of along these transitional areas between these zones. Next slide, please. So this is data from an analysis looking at the effect of freeze thaw cycles on rock slopes uh, from a mechanical engineering study. This is a different Lee et al. 2018 paper than we all love. Um, so they found that as water within the rock alternated between freezing and melting, then slopes lost structural integrity. And so they observed these various rock damage signs um, like growth of, of cracks and different mass wasting features. Um, next slide, please. So uh, we're really interested in thinking about these different like damage features, if they could be present in the PSRs or the TSRs on the moon, because you have very interesting uh, temperature cycles related to like the seasons or to the diurnal cycles as well. So it's something we're looking at now with all of the really cool work that Valentin has been doing and Mark Shirley and other colleagues um, using Horus to peer inside the PSRs of L. Rock NAC images. And I think we'll hear more about that in the next session. Um, so we're using Horus to look at interesting targets within these PSRs and TSRs to analyze possible volatile and freeze thaw uh, signatures. Uh, next, final slide, please. Okay, so um, in conclusion, we find that um, pole facing PSRs tend to be shallower than non PSRs. And this is the opposite of what you would expect just based on the geometry of the crater. And so this is really interesting. We think that it might potentially be related to the presence of uh, volatiles. And uh, currently work is ongoing looking at the same analysis, but in the North Polar region, and then also looking at denoised uh, rock knack images for different signatures of volatiles. Um, but certainly in, in the next several years, we're interested to getting more high resolution topographic and imagery data to continue to look for um, signatures of volatiles. And so I just put up this one question, which is will Viper potentially see evidence of freeze thaw cycles? I guess I should say freeze thaw cycles. Okay, thank you. And sorry for the technical troubles. Okay, great, thank you. Questions for Ariel. So I have two online. Go ahead. Uh, one is what's the latest by Michael Poston? What is the latest channel opinion on whether there are more tiny impacts from the ecliptic than the solar, uh, solar poles? What is the latest? Oh, I can pull up the chat. We uh, impact. What is the latest? <laughs> well, latitude dependence of impacts. Um, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe someone else knows. We, we um, are quite, yeah, okay. We, 
The other question is, is there a specific cutoff for temperature for a PSRs that you considered here? A great talk by Prasun Mahanti. Thanks, Prasun. Um, so for the PSRs, we were not looking at a temperature cutoff. We were looking at the PSR map that uh, the Lola team made. I think it's from Erwan's paper. Um, there was like a lot of interesting discussion about whether or not to use temperature as uh, looking at the slopes as a function of temperature because it's kind of this backwards problem where um, they're so intimately linked. That's what I was talking about with the geometry. So if something is flatter, then you're, you're not gonna have as much shadow. So we decided not to look at it as a function of temperature specifically um, and instead separate it at the, at the boundary of the PSR, um, which uh, is from Erwan's 2012 paper. Okay, hey, uh, Dana Hurley. Um, APL. Um, Ariel, so what other observations would you like to see in these craters to try to um, see, you know, get some backup evidence of this? Yeah, um, so right now with the images, we're looking at different signs like in the geomorphology. So for example, I think if you're having um, slope reduction, it could either be due to you have accumulation of infill, or it could be due to you have um, some degradation processes that are like encouraged by the presence of volatiles, like mass wasting or landslides or something like that. So it would be, I mean, great if you saw evidence of some sort of mass wasting that could be volatile related. Um, if it's more preferential um, accumulation, you might see different sorts of geomorphology on uh, the pole facing versus equator facing slope. So um, these are the types of things we we're thinking about. Um, the, the temperature distribution is you know, a little bit less helpful because you don't know how deep the volatiles are buried. If it's something that's creating like a geomorphologic change in the depth to diameter ratio, it might not be in like the upper um, area that you're probing with diviner or something. So um, yeah, we're, we're right now looking at the, the, the NAC images that I think Valentin has a presentation on, not our results, but on that process. 